Okay. Hi guys. Gals. I'm putting pals. All my friends and folks out here. I hope that all of you have been having an amazing day, night, lunch, noon, whatever, and that you're ready to read more of Sacrifice, a Star Wars fanfic by Lucky underscore Ducky underscore one two three with me. Now before we get into this, don't forget to check out our socials and also links are down in the description below for everything that you will see up here and including the previous readings to catch you all up. Other than that, I hope you um, really, really do enjoy this. Um, don't forget to go and check out Star Wars the, and Star Wars Toys, of course, the first generation. I have a feeling that most of you will like it, so that'll be in the description down below as well. Now, of course, I'm drinking water to uh, keep my voice afloat. So, <laughs> here we go. The court of Jabba the Hutt was in the midst of a drunken ruckus party. Sloppy, smelly monsters cheered and made rude noises as Ula and a fat female dancer performed in front of Jabba's throne. Jabba leered at the dancers with lustful gleam in his eyes. Quickly, he beckoned Ula to come and sit with him. She stopped dancing and backed away, shaking her head in a temporary act of defiance. Jabba's blob of a face melted into an expression of anger and pointed at the spot next to him once again. De ether. Jabba demanded. The lovely Erin shook her head again and screamed, No Chuba, no Gotore, no, no, no Tara! Furious now, Jabba scowled and pulled her toward him, tugging on the chain around her neck. Oscar! He pulled a button, he pushed a button. And before the dancer could flee, a trap door in the floor sprung open and swallowed her up. As the door snapped shut, a mouth, a muffled growl was swallowed by a hideous scream, telling everyone that Ula had perished, most likely painfully. Jabba and his monstrous friends laughed hysterically, and several revelers hurried over to watch her feet through the gate. Three Pio cringed from his position next to Java, glancing wistfully at the carbonite form of Han. However, he was immediately distracted by a blaster shot echoing from the corridor. An unnatural quiet swept the boisterous gathering. And on the far side of the room, the crush of deep branches moved aside to allow the approach of two guards, followed by Bush, an oddly cloaked bounty hunter that was leading his captive, Han's co pilot, Chewbacca. Bip took his place next to his disgusting master and whispered into his ears, pointing at Chewbacca and the bounty hunter. Jabba listened intently, staring suspiciously as the bounty hunter bowed before the gangster and spoke a greeting in a strange, electronic, proceed tongue, you bees, as DPM you. Yeah. I have come for the week, for the bounty on this Wookiee, Bush said, speaking straight to Java. 
Oh no, Chewbacca! BP exclaimed silently to himself. At last, we have the mighty Chewbacca. <laughs> Jabba boomed, maliciously smiling, devilish at the Wookiee, letting out a loud, long, blood curdling laugh. Java turned to 3PO to translate the reluctant droid obeyed. Oh, oh, yes, I'm here, your washbowl, yes, ah, uh, yes, ignoring the droid stuttering. Java continued speaking, and 3PO to nervously translate. Bush listened, studying the dangerous creatures around the room. He noticed Boba Fett standing near the door, but said nothing about it. Oh, the illustrious Jabba bids you welcome and will gladly pay you a reward of 25,000. Bush snarled. I want 50,000, no less. Jabba immediately flew into a rage, knocking the, the golden droid off the raised throne into a clattering heap on the floor. Brush adjusted his weapon as Jabba raved in hurries and Deepio struggled back onto the, um, the disheveled droid, tried desperately to compose himself. Uh, oh, but what What did I say? Deepio asked, thoroughly confused. Quickly gathering himself once again, the protocol droid spoke to the bounty hunter again, hoping to the tension in the transaction. Ah! Oh, the mighty Jabba asked why he must pay 50,000. Smirking under his mask, the bounty hunter held up a small silver ball in his hand. Thupio looked at it in alarm and then looked at Jabba, then back to the bounty hunter. The droid radiated nervousness and Jabba narrowed his eyes into slits, getting very impatient. Because he's holding a thermal detonator, Papio exclaimed, causing the guards to instantly back away as well as most of the other monsters in the room. Jabba stared at the silver ball, which had begun to glow in the bounty hunter's hand. The room had fallen into a tense and hush as they all waited for someone to make a move. Java stared at the bounty hunter manipulatively until a slight grin creeped across his vast mouth and began to chuckle. This bounty hunter is my kind of scum. Fearless and innovative, <gasps> Java said with a hearty laugh. Java offers the sum of thirty-five, and I do discuss that you take it, DPO said helpfully to the bounty hunter. Bib and the other monsters studied the bounty hunter and waited tensely for his reaction. Bush released the switch on the thermal detonator and it went to dead, allowing the room to release its breath. Sebastian. He agrees! Thepio cried excitedly. The ruckus crowd the monsters erupted in a symphony of cheers and applause as the party returned to its full noisy pitch. Chewbacca snarled and growled angry, angry, angrily as he was led away. Unbeknownst to Java, by Lando Calrissian, disguised as a guard in a partial face mask. 
The band started up dancing. The band started up and the dancing girls took the center floor again to the hoots of love. We appreciative creatures. Oosh leaned against a column with gun fighter cool and surveyed the scene. His gaze stopping only when it connected with a familiar glare from across the room. Boba Fett was watching him. Boosh sifted slightly, cradling his weapon lovingly. Boba Fett shifted with equal ominous arrogance. Meanwhile, Grimonian droids led Chewie down to the same hall R2 and 3PO had been taken before. A tentacle even reached out at the Wookiee like it did to 3PO. But Chewie's ferocious roar echoed against the walls and the tentacle sat back into its cell in terror. And to call the guards to hurl Chewie roughly into his cell, sliming the door behind him, Chewie let out pathetic howls and banged on the iron door with pitiful punches. Let's see. Okay. That'll be like the next part of it. Sweet. Okay. I got it stopped at a nice place. Which is really amazing because... I mean, I always do my best to keep these under 15. And I always do my best to... Make sure that... At least now I do. Um, you know, it's been more of a recent thing. My older ones, I didn't care for how long it went on. But I always, like, do my best to keep these, like, under or, like, at 15 minutes. And always get to a POV change or a time skip where we, you know, leave the scene so then we can be at a good place to stop and now we're at a good area so i hope that all of you enjoyed and that you go and check out all the things waiting for you down below in the description and on our channel i'll see you next time and peace love ya